Hello and welcome to Love of Learning. This series is going to be about natural language generation and it involves everything from the actual input data to an output text. So we're going to see how it works, why it works, etc. etc. Now let's start with the first part. So first of all, it's NLG. Natural language. generation. What do I mean with a natural language? Well, it's not an artificial language like um, software development uh, syntax or code. It's a natural language because it's actually spoken by humans. So, first of all, what is natural language generation? Well, it, it's basically the automatic generation of natural language text for use in reports, uh, documents, websites, speech, um, graphics, amongst other different types of output documents. So it involves generation of text for use in reports, documents, amongst others. How does it work? Well, uh, you basically start off by having a set of data, possibly logs, um, records from a, a relational database management system, or a continuous stream of let's say documents or maybe tweets from Twitter or something like that. So you've got all this data which serves as an input to the system and the actual system processes this, this information and the output is natural language text. Now this text can be used then as part of that, as an extension to the system to include it in graphics, uh, maybe maps, amongst other other different things. So, why would we want to do this? What's the purpose? Well, it's basically to automate the production of tedious and monotonous text. What do I mean with this? Maybe, maybe you have to generate um, summaries of the weather on a daily basis and you have a group of experts that sit down every day, study the math, study the data and come up with a prediction or even not a prediction but maybe it's a summary of past events, past weather events or how it's going to be in the day. So, so you've got all this data, they analyze it constantly on a daily basis and come up with natural language text that might be printed in the newspaper, might be actually said on the weather program show on the television. So, it's basically a monotonous task that requires analysis and the output is text that's going to be used for something. So we can automate this. And one of the big advantages of automating it is that we can extend our system to be multilingual. So let me give you a couple of examples. The first one would be FOD, which was developed by Carl Gentex in, I believe, 1993. And what it does is takes these records, this satellite imaging um, data, processes all of this, the system actually does the stuff, magic, and the result is weather reports or predictions for the day in English and French. I believe this is a Canadian system developed for the actual use in parts of Canada like Quebec as far as I remember. So 
that would make sense. You've actually got data where the final output is text in both languages. So people don't actually have to sit down anymore and type in all 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 of this stuff to do the, the whole analysis and develop two separate text. Just feed the system with this data and have it generate the text automatically in two languages. Another example is the match system. I believe it was generated at AT&T Research Labs in 2002 and what it does is takes all these data summaries um, from restaurants uh, such as maybe reports or evaluations by people as if it was a good restaurant or if it wasn't, um, how was the, the decor, the, um, the actual food quality, the prices, etc. It takes all these records from different restaurants, I believe it's around New York, and processes them to let's take this as a process and the output is summaries. Comparisons. and a map. What does this contain? It contains a ranked list of restaurants. So say you're looking for uh, Italian restaurants in downha downtown Manhattan or something like that. So it comes up with a list of Italian restaurants in that area ranked by your actual search preferences or a user model, should I say, and it comes up with, let's say, a map that has five, six, seven results. You click on one, and it gives you an actual summary. This is an Italian restaurant that has great decor, good food, and good prices. Or you can actually compare one restaurant against another one. Let's say you're undecided. You want to go to the, the nearest one. So you have two that are really close, and you want to see, well, which one should I go to? So you select uh, compare or contrast should I say amongst uh, both restaurants and it comes up with a text summary while this one has such and such qualities the other one has such and such and this is the main problem with natural language generation because you can have many ways of explaining something and in a certain way it depends on the user maybe as a user you want to see the good things before the bad things or negative things should I say or maybe you're interested more in the core and not that much in price so would it be relevant to include the information about price um, this also has to do with the amount of text that you can include you don't want to make a massive report on why this one and why this one or why not should I say and you don't want to create a single sentence maybe it depends if you you're actually going to have your system speak out the, the results you might want to make it quick concise and accurate or if it's actually going to be on a website maybe you want to include a bit more information maybe you're going to actually tweet this this text or send it to Facebook or another uh, online social site and you've got to keep it probably less to 104 uh, less than a four, 140 characters should I say so this is actually quite important um, so you take this user model into consideration you take the data that you've got available and you have to choose how constrained you want your output text to be so this brings me to an example of an actual system and the main pipeline we're going to be seeing there's different ways of developing an NLG system obviously this is an area of active research so I believe in the 80s and 90s two, two, two level pipelines were the most um, commonly used now the, the recent thing is use at three level pipeline should I say so this is the one that we're going to be focusing on and it includes 
three parts. I'm going to give a brief description of this. So this is the NLG pipeline. So you got your input and you get your text. Now what does this pipeline do and how is it divided? So basically you've got a goal what do you want to express and you pass it through the first area of the system which is the document planner which basically states how the whole document is organized places the constraints and how are the is it going to be generated in one paragraph in five paragraphs etc etc then you feed it uh, this this results in document plan which might be a hierarchical kind of um, set that includes basically the order of the paragraphs or sentences should I say and you pass it through uh, this document plan would be the input to the second part of the system which is the micro planner and this gives us an output the sentence plans so as you can see it's going from general to specific should I say and finally this serves as an input to the last part of the system which is the realization which delivers surface text so we've got basically three parts of the system it's the document planner the micro planner and the realizer or linguistic realizer should I say so these are these three and obviously what you do in each part in each um, segment of the system or level of the pipeline is a bit ambiguous for example you've got um, the part where you generate the, the grammar that's going to be used and you've got the actual ordering of the sentences and then you've got the actual choice or lexical choice of words so sometimes um, you can combine a bit each one of the levels maybe like the micro panel and the realizer and it all depends on the actual system if it's going to be a multilingual system if it's going to be uh, only generating text in one language etc etc so we're going to be going um, about this reviewing each one of these levels in detail in the following videos and I think we'll leave it like that for now um, an important thing to know is that the book that we're going to be using is called Building Natural Language Generation Systems and it's by a HUD reader I hope I pronounced that well and Robert so this is the book where I'm going to be let's say getting the content from or most of the content should I say because there's also some really interesting papers so if you want to check out this book be my guest it's quite informative and anyway that's all for now and see you in the next video